Thank you. Right. Thank you, David. Next, we have Bin. Bin, what's your question and where are you from? Yeah, um, I'm from the Maryland, Baltimore. My question, I have three questions because you talk about the uh, gut bacteria, so, so important. And so do you, another is fiber. Fiber is important, very important. Mm. So do you recommend the people to take the, you know, the supplement for this tool? Another is you said the acid, the high food can, uh, is very bad for the candy. So usually what, what kind of food has the high acid? Okay, so if I'm understanding a little bit of the question correctly, so absolutely correct in that gut bacteria is incredibly important for your overall health in terms of, you know, what are the things that can support gut bacteria? So first thing is, is I don't recommend just going for probiotics. And there's a couple of reasons why. Probiotics are great if there's a specific thing that you're treating. For example, we know that some people who might have IBS, certain probiotics, which is in, um irritable bowel syndrome, certain probiotics can actually help as far as that goes. If you're constipation, certain probiotics can help in terms of constipation going on. But what happens with probiotics, there was a very elegant study that was done in cell. And what they found was that a lot of the ways that people were testing if probiotics were working was they were looking at stool samples and they would look at the stool sample and say, okay, you know, so-and-so, uh, let's say they took lactobacillus, and so they found more lactobacillus in the stool. Great, that means the lactobacillus went inside the gut, it bound to the colon, did all of this magical stuff, and you're seeing it in the stool, so that means it's growing, it's thriving, it's all that stuff. But in this particular study, they did colonoscopies. They went in with a camera, and what they found was that only about 50% of the folks that were taking probiotics, the probiotics actually did anything meaning the rest of them, they were just pooping it straight out. So they weren't even sticking, they were just going out. Now, the other part of the study that was very important to understand was that when they were sticking to the inside lining going on, they actually made it harder for the rest of the bacteria to have space. So you go from this beautiful, diverse population of bacteria to essentially one or two strains that you're putting in your body at really high doses, and that's starting to crowd out. So the reason that's important is if you're just taking things like probiotics, for example, for no apparent reason, just to take probiotics, you might actually be reducing your gut microbiome diversity. And we know that it can take months for us to fix the microbiome after it's been damaged or antibiotics, et cetera, going on. And how do we fix it? Well, fermented foods obviously are excellent going on as far as that goes. But overall, the variety of fruits and vegetables feeding the bacteria with prebiotics, which is what? Fiber, right? So the more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds that you're doing, the better off you're going to be. So it's not as complicated as people want to be. I know a lot of folks are hoping that a, a supplement will be the answer. That's not to say there's anything wrong with supplements. Probiotics can be absolutely excellent. I prescribe them in my own practice all the time when it's appropriate and there's a specific target that we're going after. So in those cases, yes, they make sense, but it's not something that you just want to blanketly do because you think it'll make a difference. Thank you. Next, we have Martin. Martin, where are you from and what's your question? Um, hi, Dr. Hashimi. Uh, thank you so much for your fine uh, presentation. I'm Christian and I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I wonder about uh, polycystic kidney disease. And um, is it possible to slow down or even stop cyst formation following a whole food, plant based um, diet exclusively? And what uh, and also, is there a place for a vegan ketogenic diet in order to slow progression of ADPKD? And again, thank you so much. Yeah, so <laughs> you must have watched my video on YouTube. So <laughs> there's a really fascinating study, as you know, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. The cysts, they love glucose. So glucose feeds the cyst and that's how they grow. And so because of that, the diet that tends to actually be good is a ketogenic type diet. So when you talk about a ketogenic di type diet, there are ways to make a ketogenic type diet 
healthier. So this concept, the old type of ketogenic diet, which is that you have to do more of like the hardcore meats and you've got all the saturated fats going on, you can change that. So there's a version of it called a pescatarian ketogenic diet where you're using fish or you can do more of a plant-based ketogenic diet where your sources of fats are healthier fats for example, avocados, nuts, olive oil, tofu, et cetera, going on. So you can do that. But the idea, once again, there is, is that when it comes to cysts in an autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, those cysts are living off sugars. So even if you're somebody who's not going to want to do, quote unquote, a low sugar or a uh, low carbohydrate type diet lifestyle going on, you still want to understand that the, the typical plant-based diet that we talk about, there are so many junk foods that people are starting to put in there that we, we see so many patients. So I'm a nephrologist and an obesity medicine specialist. So I have two practices that I run. And some of you guys might be aware of the new obesity medications. Those are the GLP-1s, the Vigovis, the Ozempics, the Manjaro's going on. And it's taken the world by storm. And what's happening is, is all sorts of people are rushing towards weight loss drugs as a way of losing weight instead of trying to find out what's happening and what happens is there's so many rebounds that happen so coming back to your question of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease absolutely you need to cut down on the sugar drastically you definitely want to work with a renal dietitian this isn't something that's easily done on your own and the data is, is that you're able to slow it down. Now, we also have medication like Tovaptan that basically makes you pee like a storm. So one of the hallmark features of ADPKD is we make you drink so much water. We need to make you pee like three liters of urine a day. So you need three liters of water a day plus some because you're sweating and all sorts of other things. Thank you. All right, next we have Carol. Carol, where are you from and what's your question? Yes, hi. Uh, I'm from New Jersey and th thank you very much for your presentation. It's so excellent. I was wondering if you could um, share with us some of the things that you personally do with your diet, with your plan, your breakfast, lunch, dinner, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so I, I think you'll find my, my plan is extremely boring and uh, most <laughs> Most people will probably laugh at it. My, my breakfast is the same thing I have every single day, which is I have a bowl of oatmeal and I end up putting a tablespoon of peanut butter in it. And the reason I like peanut butter and it's I, I shop at Costco, so it's the Kirkland brand, it's unsweet and all that good stuff. But the reason I do that is because that keeps me full all the way to lunch. We have this uh, really nice, um, I think it's a Mediterranean fast food. It's, it's called Kava. C-A-B-A, it's in California. I'm, I'm out in um, Los Angeles, California. And basically I get their bowl and it's got all sorts of wonderful veggies and I get their brown rice with it and it's got sweet potatoes in it. So it's just a really nice, quick way of doing it. So I get my bowl and that's my lunchtime. I don't have any snacks in the middle. My, If you've seen any of my videos on my YouTube channel, Self Principle, I talk about the fact that the optimal number of meals per day based on science is two to three. And so then for dinner, I keep it really, really simple. It's just some kind of a salad. I eat avocados because for me, I, I have migraines. And what I've found for things like my migraines is, is being able to do a little bit of fasting makes a big difference for me. So I try to have my dinner early, not four hours before I go to bed. So that four hour window, I don't do anything. So essentially, the fast starts in the evening, goes all the way till the morning. So this concept of time-restricted eating works wonders as far as that goes. Okay, and Dr. Hashi, do we have time for two more questions? Great, okay, so next we have Barbara. Barbara, where are you from? Where's your question? Yes, hi, doctor. Um, I'm from New Jersey, and um, I was wondering if you do telehealth, because I have two family members, one who has been on dialysis for almost five years and recently had a uh, triple bypass, and also uh, someone who only has one kidney, and they really need a lot of this information, because as you said, you know, a lot of the doctors are not up on the more 
current information. And so like the one who's needs the kidney thinks that, yeah, I need to have a roast beef sandwich for lunch and that would be good. Um, so if you don't do it, do you know, or have any recommendations like it for the Houston area for dietitians or nephrologists? You know, I, I don't know specifically of anybody out in the Houston area. I don't do telehealth there. I'm okay. only licensed in Southern California. I will tell you, so I have two YouTube channels. The second one is plant-based kidney health. And that one is specific on everything related to kidney health. It's myself and Michelle Crosmer, who's a renal dietitian. So her and I, every week, we basically take folks' questions and we look at the evidence we create a video around that. So you're welcome to check out that one. Everything there is based on studies. There's nothing that I share. My, my philosophy is very simple. I don't give opinions. I give you the evidence. If the evidence changes, I come back and I tell you this is the new evidence. That's always been my model. I think the world has no shortage of gurus. I'm not a guru. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That'll be very, very helpful. And in fact, and they're, you know, younger than I am, way younger than I am. And YouTube, that's the way to learn for them. So uh, thank you. Awesome. Next, we have Ali. Ali, where are you from? What's your question? I'm California. And I have a question about, I um, have friends that juice, celery juice, like two, two, two whole things of celery every morning. Um, is there anything that's bad about that for your kidneys? No, there's there's nothing bad about that. It's just, you know, I, the whole concept of juicing is interesting because I, I can tell you back in the day when um, I was going to McDonald's every day because uh, I was absolutely broke and I knew nothing about nutrition and all that stuff. You know, it was funny because I would go and uh, when I wanted to be healthy, if I had some extra cash, I would get myself one of these like, juices and be like, Oh, my God, I'm doing myself so much good. There is nothing that I know about juicing that's actually healthy. So this is an interesting concept where fruits are so amazing that if you have fruit, it's the perfect packaging of fiber of water, of all of the antioxidants in just the right proportion available to you. So all you have to do is eat it. Once you juice it, you leave all this beautiful prebiotics out of it. No vegetables. It's the same concept. You oh, can, okay. if you juice celery, what happens to all of the fiber? You get the water portion of it, but you're leaving everything else behind. So that's oh. why what we're saying is, is when we start to talk about these concepts of juicing, that juicing is not the same as making smoothies. But even when you talk about making smoothies, and for our patients who are diabetics, who may be listening to this um, show today, Keep in mind that even when you're talking to diabetics and they're interested in making smoothies, and we talk about the idea of making smoothies as healthier, what you're doing with even smoothies where you're still including all the fiber because you're getting the pulp in there, you're breaking all the bonds apart so that the sugar gets released a lot faster. Once again, nature has had millions of years to perfect a product for us. There's a symbiotic relationship where the hope there is is you know, we get the food from all sorts of plants. And as we do that, the idea for the plants is we're carrying the seeds, etc. We're spreading the plants. So it's a symbiotic relationship there. But we have found ways to take that relationship and think that we're doing ourselves a service. So not to say that smoothies are bad, but juicing, definitely, there's no redeeming quality to juicing. There's no harm as far as what you guys are doing, but there's no real good news about that. For smoothies, for our diabetics, we definitely don't recommend it. I can tell you, I do smoothies when I'm in a rush. I definitely do smoothies. I've always done them. And what I tell people is exactly the same thing is whenever you have the option, your fruits and your vegetables are the best place to start. For people who need to lose weight, for example, how do people bypass or bypass surgery? In other words, how are people able to regain weight after gastric bypass? We take their stomachs, we cut it and make it really, really tiny. You know how? By drinking your calories. All you have to do is literally juice. If you drink your calories, you can bypass all the signal that goes from your mouth to your brain when you chew, from your stomach to your brain when you chew, all this stuff that happens where our bodies have built up these elegant pathways, you can bypass that. Once again, not to discount that, but you have a better option of chewing your food 
You know, it's kind of like what our grandparents told us and what our parents told us. Chewing your food will always continue to be literally the best thing you can do. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Hashmi. And I heard you mention that you had a YouTube channel or you have one. Uh, where where can people find that? Yeah. So there's two channels. The first one is youtube.com slash self principle. That's this one right there. And that's the one where I talk about all things broader than just kidneys is nutrition and kidney. And then the other one is uh, youtube.com slash plant-based kidney health. And that's the one who is specifically dedicated to just kidney disease. So plant-based kidney health is the other one. That's that one right there. So that's the one where we focus all about everything that's related to strictly kidney disease. Great. All right, Dr. Hashmi, I want to thank you for your, your time here. And also, I'm going to mute the audience and see what they have to say. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you.